hours. We picked up about an inch of rain an hour. That's going to cause flooding and uh, this is going to push east heading into the overnight. There we go. An update now over four inches of rain there in Sulphur. 4.2 inches of rain has fallen. Okay, Hunter, I'm going to have you take over for a second. Yep. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so new update from the National Weather Service. They're still watching that circulation that was in far western Johnston County. Right now, if we radar, or I should say velocity is still very messy, but if we look at shear rate, that's been the best thing we've had so far. You can see the colors starting to get a little bit brighter there. We were looking at just around five minutes ago. This is right near Dobb Ranch Road near Mill Creek Dolomite. That's where we're watching the potential for a significant tornado on the ground right there. Circulation might be coming close to Mill Creek. That's currently what what the National Weather Service is thinking at this time. That is the main thing that we are going to be watching. But looking at wide scale, just all in general, the whole region, what we've had so far. Currently, we have it appears to be one confirmed tornado warning for that Mill Creek storm, that tornado that could be making its way into Mill Creek uh, with the potential for this considerable tornado right here. And they are going to be the National Weather Service adding a considerable damage tag to this warning southwest of Mill Creek. That's where that circulation is located. You can clearly see if I back up the scans here just by a little bit, that inflow notch that we've been talking about for quite some time, just right there along the Marshall Johnston County line. If I put a little arrow on it right here, you can see right there. That's where all that warm, moist air is being fed into the system. And that is what is allowing us to see the potential for this tornado to survive and thrive for a long amount of time going to the north and northeast. Thankfully, missing, missing Tishomingo, but still it is possibly on the ground with a confirmed tag, considerable tag on this tornado warning that extends all the way up to the north into Pontotoc County. Shear rates still having that little storm, that little tornado right there. It's been a bit messy. Of course, there is a lot of shear all throughout here, but if I circle it, this is what we're watching right here. That's the tornado potentially making it towards the ground right near Howell Road, South Dobb Ranch Road, kind of making more of a northerly turn here so that might be taking a track into around that Murray Johnston County line but anything from the National Weather Service hasn't been coming in ever since that considerable damage tag has been added in terms of there it goes there's the new update with this warning reading off the specs where it goes until 12:15 in the morning um, it is still a particularly dangerous situation. Any locations within this, it's generally going to be north of Mansville approaching Mill Creek. So if you are anywhere within this polygon still, make sure you are taking cover because this whole thing into tonight is going to be very active. We've had multiple confirmed tornadoes on the ground causing damage, especially in sulfur. People are trapped in sulfur still. That's why there are search and rescue teams making their way there. So even if you're not within a tornado warning still, Keep an eye on the weather because things are going to be changing all throughout the night. We have this line of storms out towards the west, which is generally non severe, which is very good news. It is severe down towards the south near Graham in North Texas, west of the DFW Metroplex. But this is pushing eastward, just like some of our model data had yesterday and today. It is confirming, it is verifying that we have a lot of heavy rain pushing on eastward, and it's just going to keep on going until it eventually loses steam and that won't be happening for quite some time until early Sunday morning and possibly having some redevelopment in towards Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening. So this event is far from over and as we head in towards tonight, that's going to be a huge concern. Heavy rain, flash flooding, all the hazards, damaging winds, large hail and even some tornadoes that could go long track like some of them have gone today. That is the big thing that we are watching, but still having two tornado warnings, one confirmed, one radar indicated that is south generally of that confirmed tornado warning. If we put on shear rates, you can see that that tornado right there tr tracked right over Lake Murray, still moving towards generally the east and northeast, but still something that we are very closely monitoring as we head throughout the next several hours. Still not receiving anything new from the National Weather Service, so we'll just have to wait on that. But all in all, 
just keep your head on a swivel. That's the name of the game as we head in towards the early morning hours of our Sunday. It is 1205 in the morning, so that is going to be the start of a very, very long night for everybody here at the K10 weather team and at the K10 studios um, in terms of velocity still holding on mainly north and east of Mill Creek High School there. Still very messy, so it's not really the best data that we are going to be pulling in from here, but everything generally is going to be embedded within all of these storms as they continue moving generally towards the north and northeast. Highway 377, anywhere in southern Pontotoc County, northern Johnston County, you will be under the gun here soon. If you know anybody who lives here near Connerville, Pontotoc, eventually extending, if they do extend this tornado warning, even if they don't, you should still be weary. Hardin City, Mary's Barn, Shiloh Ranch, out in southern Pontotoc. Top County. That's where you're going to be watching the potential for this tornado to make its way through near Ruse Landing Strip, East 1720 Road, Chisholm Road in far northern Johnston County, far southern Johnston County, County Road 3500. You're within that confirmed tornado warning. We are continuing to monitor this, but in terms of anything on the ground, and then in terms of our correlation coefficient debris tracker, I'm not really seeing much. So that's still good news. Um, shows that the tornado isn't on the ground. It's not confirmed. But still, you're going to want to keep on watching K10 as we head in towards the next several hours until early Sunday morning because anything can happen at this point. This is a very, very untapped atmosphere at this time. The further east you go, even if it's nighttime, we're still having tornadoes develop. So it's still going to be a long night ahead. No matter where you are, everybody's going to be seeing rain eventually upwards of around maybe four, five, six, seven inches of rain could be possible. Already four inches falling there in Sulphur and a lot more on the way as a very slow moving line of storms continues pushing on through the western counties, mainly I-35 at this time. But as we head into, say, the next several hours, that will be pushing further in towards south central Oklahoma, south eastern Oklahoma. Eventually North Texas will be getting in on the quote unquote party here out towards Monte County. You're starting to see some rain but this is all going to be moving in eventually towards US 69 and 75 and onwards past east of that. So it's still something that we're going to keep you well aware of heading in towards the night and early Sunday. But as of right now, I think our biggest concern is in northern Johnston County, even though our velocity data is pretty bad. I think that's where our current kind of major concern is at this time in northern Johnston County and in eventually in towards southern Pontotoc County. We'll continue pushing up towards the east and northeast. Uh, Latest from the National Weather Service, the circulation that we've been watching southeast of Mill Creek is broadening as we kind of see right here. Of course, the pixels are kind of all over the place, but you have this huge broadened circulation. So that's very good. I mean, with broad circulations that shows that generally it's not the strongest of storms. Obviously, it's still rotating, but it's when you get those really tight couplets when the reds and the greens on our velocity kind of graph model data set are really tight together. They're right next to each other. That's when you typically see a very strong couplet in the potential for a tornado that could be imminent and reaching towards the ground. But other than that, that's the, I think, the biggest concern we have right now. In terms of our warnings, both of them at least, the confirmed one that is extending in towards Pontotoc County, that still goes until 12.15. So we have another six minutes on this warning right now. The one that is south of it goes until, and it does include just north of Lake Murray, that also goes until 12.15. So we'll just have to wait another six minutes here, and then that's when potentially these warnings will be expired, but of course they can be extended with great ease, and that will possibly happen here, but there has been no word of an extension just yet. From, Nash, uh, the, from the National Weather Service in Norman, the circulation just north of Dixon is strength. Oh yeah, just north of Dixon is strengthening. They are going to be upping the tag for this warning to considerable damage. 
So that's uh, another tornado that we're going to have to possibly watch here. Uh, the circulation is right there. As I was just talking about, the reds and the greens, or in this case, kind of the pinks, purple, and the blue, they're right next to each other. That shows that it's a very tight circulation. That's something that is going to possibly become an issue here. It's right near Ponderosa Road, Fernwood Road, Lone Cedar Road, right along US 177, I believe that is, yeah, 177, right near that Johnston County line with Murray County. That's the main circulation that the National Weather Service is watching at this time and what we are gonna keep an eye on if I track it out for you here, going towards Mill Creek. 1214, we have said this place a lot, the stables at Washita Farms, you are going to be once again under the gun for this tornado to come through 1216. Once again, a location we have said multiple times, the Armour Municipal Airport, Nebel at 1224, Mill Creek Limestone, Mill Creek Tree Nursery at 1229 and 1240, respectively, Ruse Landing Strip at 1246 and Scullin at the same time, 1246 for our Sunday morning. That is pretty much all I have at this time for you, Mandy. Okay, so zoom back out for me again. We're going to look at reflectivity and see what we're looking at and also check our Texas counties uh, to see what the plan is with that. Okay, so now the line is starting to move in and take over and we're seeing both of these kind of get uh, combined here. So we should start to see a transition to some of a straight line wind event later on tonight as this line really starts to get going. We also have uh, this tornado warning still active like Hunter has been talking about for some of Carter County, some of Johnson County, some of Marshall County, and then that is going to be moving kind of with the line. So we'll see this take over and eventually move a little bit more east than north, uh, but the flooding threat is going to start to ramp up with these heading into the overnight. And we're also starting to see some more rain building in here for our Texas counties as a few more showers start building in there as well. Okay, so uh, keep me up to date here, Hunter. We have uh, this one, two tornado warnings here. Let's zoom on in real quick and go over uh, some of the times with these. This one is still confirmed on the ground. Is that correct? It is, yes, yes. Okay, so let's punch up either velocity or shear rate, whichever one looks better, because this is going to be embedded with all of that. It's I suspect right. it's about right here. Yes. That's due south and southeast of Ardmore Municipal Airport. The stables at Washita Farms also uh, gonna be moving off to the north and the northeast with this main circulation. That Mill Creek Limestone would be in the path of this as well as Pennington Creek Hunting Club and Mill Creek High School uh, downstream as that pushes off to the north and the northeast. Tishomingo is not currently in this tornado warning. Here's 377 there as this travels uh, north, uh, North South Road there, but we are continuing to see uh, this shear rate building in with this uh, next round as it's uh, moving on through. And at times, a uh, pretty significant shear markers with that one. And this would travel into Pontotoc County and uh, okay, so we have a video coming in. This is southwest of Lindsay, Oklahoma. Uh, this is what time is this taken, guys? 11.40, okay, so this was about 30 minutes ago. You see that lowering here, um, possibly even making contact with the ground with the lightning there off in the distance, and that is going to uh, be one of the reasons why we still have so many tornado warnings for us uh, today. So again, that earlier today, about 20 to 30 minutes ago, if we wanna go ahead and go back to the maps and see everything with that newly issued tornado warning, this goes until 12.45 for Johnston and Pontotoc counties and uh, looks like we also have another confirmed tornado south of that. So when you can, Hunter, go ahead and read me the specs and what we're seeing. Yes, yeah, so this radar indicated tornado warning, which includes far northern Johnston County and Pontotoc County, kind of south of Ada, going until 1245 in the morning. It's a very messy radar scan in terms of a lot. Oh, that's a lot better right there. You can see the circulation kind of tightening up right here if i can get my drawer tool it's this circulation right on the county line just north of the county line in Pontotoc county that is moving towards the east 
or I should say the north and northeast right around 35 miles per hour. So that's going to be one thing we're going to watch that is possibly going to be crossing Highway 177 US or I should say Highway 377 there in Pontotoc County. Now going down south, we're going to have to go on shear right here to see where this is located. Maybe not even shear rate. Right. This is kind of a messy, messy thing, but I guess we got a little bit of an inflow right here showing where this tornado is located. Let me get all these locations out of here, but right here is pretty much where the tornado is going to be located, right in there, because we got all the inflow coming in, warm, moist air mass, kind of untapped. That's the pretty much the general location where this this confirmed tornado is going to be right near the stables at Rashida Farms. This is the place that has been getting hit time and time again tonight, right in that sweet spot, right in between Armour Municipal Airport and the stables at Washita Farms. That is a confirmed tornado that is on the ground right now. Considerable damage, according to the National Weather Service in Norman. Mandy. Okay, that's going to be right here uh, that we are seeing that area of circulation. Again, training over the same area that's already seen these tornadoes moving through so far today. So that would be coming towards Mill Creek and uh, also some of Tishomingo could see this storm move on through depending on uh, the exact path on this. But again, another confirmed tornado with this. The atmosphere not done just yet. We are starting to see all of this getting pretty messy with all of the heavy rainfall from Milo down to Rec. They're seeing heavy rain in Carter County. This is the main line as it's evolving. We still have a couple of isolated cells out ahead of this main line. Those uh, are going to be eaten up by this line and now we're going to start to watch some embedded tornadoes kind of spin up tornadoes mainly out along the main edge of this as it continues uh, moving through the heart of Texoma. So still a couple active tornado warnings ongoing. Arnmore down to Marietta seeing that rain building on in and so far we're starting to see some light showers also falling in Grayson County. The rain is coming for folks in Texas who haven't seen the rain so far just yet but as a reminder that tornado watch goes until 3 a.m. here for our Sunday morning and we are expecting a downstream watch with this ongoing all the way through tomorrow morning. So storms still going to be possible for folks in Atoka, Antlers, Hugo, Paris down over towards Bonham. We are going to be watching some of these light showers starting to build in, but we've got more thunderstorms that are going to be arriving heading into the overnight. But Ardmore to Marietta seeing very heavy rainfall and then there in Johnston County we're also continuing to see uh, that active tornado threat. So let's zoom back on in here, Hunter, there on the west side of Johnston County, where we have this confirmed tornado. This is the inflow notch right there. It's going to be traveling to the north and the northeast. And with that, we'll be watching uh, this storm activity ongoing. Uh, here's the Katon transmitter. So this is going to be getting close to our transmitter uh, with this confirmed tornado, but that's going to be heading uh, through Johnston County now. Carter County. This is going to be leaving Carter County and then folks there in southern Pontotoc County need to keep an eye on this because this is going to be likely pretty rain wrapped. We still have a lot of warm air that we're able to be ingested through this storm as it moves slowly east and northeast. Do we have any updates coming in here from the National Weather Service, Hunter? Nothing that I've seen so far other than our new tornado warning that confirmed one there. That has been the last thing that we've gotten from them. So that's just it's going to be a waiting game to see. Yeah, here we go. Uh, circulation increasing near Central Homa. They're going to have a tornado warning coming out for that here very soon. Okay, so this is now moving into Cole County. My guess is it's going to be this right here, that little notch. We're starting to see these brief spin ups along the leading edge of the line there. And then Colgate itself uh, may just be south of that as it moves on through. There's uh, Panther Creek facility. Here's Bent Tree Farms. There's Rocking F Arena. And that tornado warning that we're waiting on is likely going to be covering some part of this part of Cole County. So now transitioning to some of these brief spin up tornadoes that we're seeing and just still waiting on the National Weather Service to issue that warning.
morning, but we knew no, we do know that that is going to be coming. Let's zoom on out again. I want to make sure we're keeping an eye on this flooding threat because we do have this flash flood warning uh, that is still in place for that line of thunderstorms. We have more out to the west, but so far doesn't look like we're seeing additional flash flood warnings except for that one over Ada. But this is still very concerning to me. Uh, that inflow notch there for the Johnston County storm with that tornado warning and then uh, do we have two new tornado warnings now here? This one coming into Ada, was that one there before? It was, yes. Okay, so that's blending in a bit. But uh, let's take off real quick the radar. We'll just show you Polygon so you can see who's in the warnings and who's not. This is uh, tornado warning active, does not include Ada at this time. Here's the Cole County tornado warning there. That's going to be just to the north of Colgate and the Tishomingo uh, west of that. We're seeing that active tornado warning. And so these are traveling northeast. Let's Zoom in on the Cole County warning. Uh, that's going to include uh, areas north of Colgate. They're along 75 Panther Creek facility, Cars Drift Complex, Boiling Springs Church, Central Homa, and the Colgate gas plant. Hunter, let's read the specs with this. Yep, so this tornado warning will be going through 1245 on this early Sunday morning, including Cole and Hughes counties. I think it's mainly going to be this little, little notch right here if i get my tool working here my little squiggle this right here i think that's where it's going to be located right there a little bit on the north side of the warning polygon but it's just a little kink in the line and that's all it can take for a tornado to really kind of spin up right along this line and looking at velocity you can kind of see the little bright greens right there just south of boiling springs church um i think that's where it could be situated at. Yeah, that's going to be the main area of rotation that we're watching with this. So basically due north of Central Homa and due east of 48, there's Lula Fire Department and Pleasant Hill Baptist Church that's going to stay out to the west. So folks along 75 and ahead of this going to have it. This is a little bit smaller than we've been seeing. So this is going to be more of that QLCS type that's starting to get embedded with this line as it's moving on through. OK, zoom on out a little bit for me, Hunter. And we'll see what we uh, are looking at here. So three active tornado warnings. It is currently 12:21 a.m. We've got a long way to go. Let's go back to that Johnson County warning and see what we're looking at uh, with that. I know this is kind of getting a little messy. The the velocity couplet is just really not good. But this looks like it's right over Mill Creek, Mill Creek High School. Seeing that circulation. Have we got any updates coming in from Johnson County here? Yes, their emergency manager just put in chat that the Mansville Fire Department has eyes on the tornado north of Mansville, multiple vortices uh, north of Man Mansville right now. OK, so we have a multiple vortice tornado. Let's find Mansville and show everyone where that is. It should be this right here. That's the circulation. But uh, just for bearings and whatnot, we can draw kind of a ruler tool and show you what we're seeing with that. Here's the Pennington Creek Hunting Club, a still very large tornado that's going to be on the ground here that we have eyes on, according to Johnson County EM there. And uh, this is going to be tracking basically straight through an area that already saw storms earlier today from Mill Creek High School and over towards that Pennington Creek Hunting Club and the Tishomingo National Fish Hatchery. When we can, let's put a track out on this, continue to extend that into Pontotoc County. And then any updates as we get them, let's go ahead and uh, read those out, Hunter. Yeah, there's just a lot of stuff going on right here. Maybe okay, try for, shear rate and see if that yeah. is a little more helpful. This velocity product has been pretty contaminated. Ah, That's not helpful. Not really. <sighs> okay, okay uh, let's Mansville. go back to reflectivity. Maybe that was probably going to be the best way for us to see it with what we have. This is going to be the inflow notch, so it's going to be right in here. Or it's going to be Mansville. Okay, so Mansville is just east of Dixon. Let me get my bearing straight here. If we put velocity on, it's going to be right there. They should be. If Mansville is here, they're looking north. They should see yeah. it in here. Yep. Uh, see if we and can query some of these. This is busy. probably at least 90 mile per hour winds. Ooh, wow. All right. What do we got? But we do know that 70s. this is confirmed active right now at this time uh, with at least, yeah, 70 mile per hour winds there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, have they said All anything right. else? I know they said multi vortex tornado That's with it. this confirmed on the ground. Still not a whole lot of information coming nope, in. Not at all.
that's all I got. That was from the emergency manager there in Johnston County. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom on out a little bit. We can add the polygons back on to see everyone where that is. It looks like that warning is flashing. So they have trimmed this back some, but still includes a good chunk of Johnston County. Does not include Tishomingo proper. Here's Tishomingo and here's 377. Um, but we also still are watching that confirmed tornado. It's going to be right in here. You can see that turn. We want to pause this and kind of slowly step through. This right here is what we're going to be watching. That's the confirmed tornado right there. This is going to be where the debris ball is going to be. We can punch up CC and see if we can get that TDS. Okay, so we're getting some video in from Ardmore earlier today. We'll go ahead and show you that from Doug Drace. This is gonna be about three hours ago. Here's the tornado right here. Jeez. They're near Best Buy. Again, this is Ardmore, a very large tornado tracking through town. You can see right here, about three hours ago. This is the kind of tornadoes that we've been dealing with today. And this, this is a tornado outbreak. That's what this is currently. We've had several tornadoes touch down in the heart of Texoma and Ardmore has been hit, hit several times so far uh, there tonight. Hunter. No real significant information at this time, Mandy. Just the trimmed back tornado warning that has a confirmed tag on it for portions of Johnston and Murray counties now going through 1 a.m. So they I guess they extended the time on this just a little bit, but no real clear signs. I would say on our debris tracker in terms of shear rate, it's going to be messy no matter what. Yeah, that's just not going to be anything in terms of it's hail hard hasn't to really the been anything. Over the same area over and over again. Yeah. And at some point here, Hunter, we're going to need to send you home so you can also Prepare take over tomorrow. tomorrow morning when we have uh, that tomorrow. But Amber's in, and so they can kind of switch out here tonight as we continue tracking uh, these thunderstorms, these active tornadoes. The velocity product has been very messy for us recently, so we can go ahead and punch up reflectivity uh, back here and add those polygons back up. But if you are just joining us, we have several active tornado warnings, one in Cole County. We have a very large tornado ongoing right now in Johnston County. This is going to be tracking into Pontotoc County. We're seeing more rain spreading in with these thunderstorms, especially near Tishomingo. South of that, Lake Texoma starting to see additional rainfall and we'll have to watch these showers as they're building out ahead of this main line to see kind of what they do going forwards heading into the overnight. It might just uh, kind of mess up the line or we'll have to watch and see if they develop into any isolated cells out ahead of this main line. But sulfur is still under this flash flood warning. Lake of the Arbuckles is also still under this flash flood warning. Ardmore remains with that flooding threat. We've got more storms continuing to build in here from the south. And when y'all are ready, we'll touch base on this Cole County tornado warning that has been fairly newly issued for uh, some embedded stuff along the edge of the line. Amber. Yes, so this uh, tornado warning for Cole County. Let me see if I can pull this up here, get it ready. So this is for Northern Cole County. Does not include the town of Colgate. They are just south of that tornado worn storm. So this is gonna go through 1245. Um, the main area of circulation was seen just around Centrahoma a little bit earlier this morning or earlier tonight, whatever side of the clock you're on here. but. Pulling up velocity data here. It's again, as we've been saying pretty much all night long that it's pretty, pretty messy. But yeah, Central Homa, if I can zoom in here and maybe get that pulled up on here. But this does include Panther Creek facility, Maudi Ranch. There's Central Homa right there. That's where that you can kind of see that green. If I can get my arrow here. So you see here, this is where that main area of circulation is. This does include Old State Highway 3. East 1625 Road, Roebuck Road, Polk Road, moving a little bit further towards the northeast here, Old 75 Road, North 3780 Road, Boiling Springs Church, Pine and Legal Road, and the Cars Drift Complex. This also does go a little bit further north into Hughes County, which is technically not our viewing area, but if you have uh, friends and family in the Hughes County area, just keep that in mind. That tornado warning is going to continue into there and not to uh, 
take away from the active tornado warning that's in Pittsburgh County. I believe this is just west of McAllister or excuse me. That is a severe thunderstorm warning for Pittsburgh County, not a tornado warning that is uh, warned for about 60 mile an hour winds. So a lot of wind coming in with this storm in Pittsburgh County. But yeah, that newly issued tornado warning for Cole County is primarily for that area that is just over Central Homa heading towards 75 here. These are moving northeast. Um, so this is going to be heading right towards 75, probably uh, within the next couple of minutes, if not already there. And then um, also down the line here is Panther Creek facility and Colgate gas plant. And again, this is moving northeast, so going to be kind of moving in towards Pittsburgh County if this kind of uh, persist, but right now it's primarily in Cole County. So Pittsburgh County, not an immediate threat, but kind of be thinking and keeping your eyes on it uh, because this could easily track into uh, your area just west of Indian Nation Turnpike. Um, and it looks like National Weather Service in Norman also says they are also looking at circulation southwest of Dixon near Mill Creek and again mainly north of Central Homa. Mill Creek circulation is taking almost an identical path to the circulation that just rolled through about 25 minutes ago. So again, this is why we're saying if you're even if the tornado warning is over and done, the storms are not. So stay in your tornado safe areas because these are kind of taking similar paths here, at least for the Mill Creek tornado warned storm here. Yeah, that's what we've seen pretty much so far this evening. We got going a little after eight o'clock. And since then, these storms have really just traveled in the same path over and over and over and over again. And unfortunately, a lot of reports of damage. I think we're going to get some more reports of damage heading into daylight tomorrow, but we're not done yet. And uh, yeah, a long way to go. The tornado watch still in place through about 3 a.m. with these active warnings ongoing. Uh, in mainly in Johnston County as well as in uh, Cole County and then Pontotoc County are all under these tornado warnings at this time. Still one large tornado confirmed on the ground. I don't think we're getting any crazy updates coming in, but Amber, have we heard anything from the National Weather Service? Um, no updates as far as uh, any tornado damage or tornado on the ground other than a bit, again a few minutes ago. I know Hunter mentioned that the Mansville fire had eyes on the tornado just north of Main Mansville with multiple um, vortices there. So we're still going to track through that. Um, been getting a lot of questions about Ada. Ada is not included in the current tornado warning, but is just south of it. So if that area of circulation continues, if you're in Ada, I would say stay put, stay where you where you are because these tornado warnings have been extended all evening long. So I could easily see this being extended as that kind of main area of circulation goes uh, north again. That is from that Mill Creek area, Johnston County tornado that's moving into Pontotoc County. Now again, it's very, very messy on kind of all aspects here, velocity, shear, there's so much shear, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly when and where and which area this, what time this is from. But uh, yeah, you can see there's a lot of spin in the atmosphere and uh, it's just so messy at this point, but we do know, I mean, we've seen through damage and reports that tor multiple tornadoes have been on the ground and still that confirmed tornado in Johnston County around the Mill Creek area. Amber, if you want to punch up area, uh, that me. future sky forecast, just so we show everyone kind of how this is going to evolve over the next couple of hours. We've been talking about that, uh, but we'll show you because this line is catching up. So here's what this line is going to look like. I think this is doing a pretty decent job of showing this line through about 1 a.m. All the kinks on this line going forwards, we are expecting some potential for some brief uh, spin up tornadoes and Amber, just so you know, you are still on camera there, but uh, we are watching this line going on through potentially for the next couple of hours. And as it would move through, this would still have a tornado threat. Here's a look at 6, 7 a.m. This finally weakens, but then here's <laughs> Tomorrow afternoon, we're expecting more of these storms to build back in later in the day. Here's 2, 3, 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. in the afternoon tomorrow. So we could potentially be doing this all over again later tomorrow afternoon. That'll eventually clear by Monday morning, but 
We've got a long way to go in terms of this storm potential. There's still going to be a tornado threat on the way for tomorrow. Here is the current tornado watch. It goes through 3 a.m. on Sunday, and uh, these storms are getting a little closer to the edges of this watch. So at some point, I do expect, at least from the National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center, that we will get some kind of extension with this watch going forward. Currently, it includes Atoka, Bryan, Pittsburgh, Cole, Johnson, Marshall counties. It uh, does not include Grayson, Fannin, or Lamar. But as that line moves on through, there would still be some tornado potential. And so we are expecting to see, uh, at least with that line, as it moves through, still holding on to some type of tornado threat through about sunrise Sunday morning. And that is going to be uh, quite quite a ways to go. It's a little after 12.30 here a.m. for your Sunday morning. We've been going for about four and a half hours with these confirmed tornadoes. And uh, that's where we're at right now as these storms are going to be lifting on through. So Amber took off that uh, reflectivity. You can see where the polygons are. It's Pontotoc County, Ada not included, as well as Johnson County with that confirmed tornado. And then Cole County still goes as well. So 1 a.m. for Johnson and Murray counties. That's going to be another uh, 25 minutes or so that we're still watching for that tornado threat. We also have this one for Johnson and Pontotoc counties. And that's going to go until about 1245. So about 10 minutes left on this action active one that's technically downstream of the confirmed one. And then we also have the Cole County. Uh, that's a flash flood warning. Let's see which one uh, that goes until there three go. for Pontotoc. Cole and Hughes County's tornado warnings also go until 1245 for this morning. Amber. Uh, yeah, so an update from uh, emergency manager in Johnston County. They are still reporting um, active activity there. Funnel north of Mansville, Ra Ravia Fire and Mansville Fire have confirmed that they're in Johnston County. Again, that is why you're seeing, I know there's a lot of different colored boxes on uh, your map and on your screen that you're seeing, but this darker line here, not the one that includes kind of armor, that is a flood warning, but this one for Johnston County, that is for the confirmed tornado that is on the ground from Johnston County that is going to be lifting off towards the northeast into Pontotoc County. That's why they've kind of issued that uh, warning for Pontotoc County a little bit further downstream. But in addition to all the rotation, strong storms, winds, heavy rain has also been an ongoing issue. You can see a lot of those flood warnings going off. I mean, sulfur, Ardmore included in that flood warning. Sulfur has received over five inches of rainfall over the last three hours. So that's quite a bit of rain. And remember, we just had last weekend all that rainfall. So the ground is still pretty saturated after even just last weekend. But this rainfall going to be leading to a lot of flood concerns moving forward, even after the storm and tornado threat has uh, kind of subsided here. But yeah, we are not quite done with the storm and tornado threat uh, right now. But we are still looking at that active confirmed tornado on the ground in Johnston County that is heading towards Pontotoc County. I'm going to try to pull up velocity here. Um, if you were watching, uh, we did our Surviving the Storm series and we talked about all the different things you might be hearing this evening, tonight, velocity couplet, rotational couplet, uh, shear, CC, correlation coefficient, and hopefully you were able to see that and kind of learn what we're looking for and what we're looking at. While things might be messy, there's still kind of that general idea of the reds and the greens coming together, that rotational couplet here, which is looking now to be more so out of Johnston County, in my opinion, uh, more so into Pontotoc County, south of Ada. I'm going to get my ruler out here, and this is about... 10 to 15 miles south of Ada, and while Ada is not included in that tornado warning, still not a bad idea to just stay put in your storm, your tornado safe room, wherever that may be. This still does include portions of State Highway 3, 377 there, but yeah, we're still wa watching for that kind of area of rotation, whether or not it's still going to be on the ground when it moves into while well, it's in Pontotoc County. That's kind of uh, what we're going to be watching for and looking for reports. Uh, yeah, and as it moves north, it's going to be moving away from the leading edge of this line. And so it will be interesting to see now that we're kind of transitioning here from just the isolated supercell threat to more of this QLCS spin up tornado threat, how that is going to trend kind of short term and long term with this line, because right now it's embedded and you can see it's basically traveling due north here. 
uh, while a lot of these other ones are still kind of going more on that northeast trend. So the Cole County one is going northeast. That's very messy with velocity data, but no confirmation there. But if there is a tornado, it would likely be in Pontotoc County now with this main area of circulation we're watching. We'll also just kind of have to keep an eye. Uh, the trend today is the southern extent of the line or just anything out in front of the line has beefed up, gone tornadic, and then really kept going and just trained over these same areas and uh, just do me a favor amber pause this draw me a ruler tool from kind of this edge of this tornado polygon all the way to the end of the carter county line just for the, those couple of counties i'm going to show you how much distance this is a very short amount of distance that we're talking with storms if you want to go all the way out there to almost stevens carter county oh. uh, this is a, basically a 30 to 40 to possibly 50 50 mile per hour mile swath, a 50 mile swath, 40 to 50 mile swath of area that has seen all of these tornadoes move through today. These have been very concentrated so far, and unfortunately, uh, we're just going to be watching that kind of same area still hold the tornado threat. Now, as this pushes east, we're going to open up new areas that haven't yet seen some of the tornadoes, but the flooding threat will still be on the back end going forwards in the overnight. OK, we're getting some damage photos in from Marietta, the Oklahoma truck stop there. This was that again confirmed tornado that hit Marietta. We knew that it crossed I-35. We heard that it hit the Valero. Uh, this is pretty significant. Uh, damage looks like power lines down. This is Carissa Eric Wildman that sent this in again from Marietta. This um, this was about 1215 when she sent this in, and so you can see all of the damage there with that. Unfortunately, um, just I, daylight is going to reveal a lot more from what we've already been getting in for today, and they are doing search and rescue. We are getting um, more reports slowly filtering in, but uh, the storms haven't stopped and those areas already hit. So it's kind of hard to know and to continue doing uh, some of that search and rescue while we're still dealing with active uh, tornado warnings, unfortunately. OK, so we can go ahead and go back to the maps. Here's the main line of storms that we're watching moving on through here with a couple of tornado warnings out ahead of the line. It looks like so far there's a severe thunderstorm warning for Pittsburgh County with a tornado possible tag. We will be watching uh, for some brief spin up tornadoes with that. Still seeing this low level moisture building in from the south and we'll have to watch these storms that are currently in Denton County. If they uh, do what storms did today so far, they kind of move north, really build up, go more isolated and then we'll continue uh, watching those heading into the rest of the overnight. But this is more evolving into this main line and uh, we're just going to continue to watch this moving in. And we'll also keep an eye on southeastern Oklahoma, eastern North Texas as far as what they're going to be doing um, just with storm chances and see if we get isolated cells trying to form ahead of the line that would still have some tornado potential with it or if we're just going to mainly see uh, this main line moving on through so far tonight. OK, Amber, any updates coming in? Um, the only major updates that we're really getting here is uh, from Pontotoc County Emergency Management talking about which I feel like every time it rains in Ada or in the Pontotoc County area, we get a lot of flooding when it rains heavy like this. So uh, multiple roads are washed out and trees across um, southwestern Pontotoc County. There are vehicles stranded in the Bing area and multiple other roads are closed due to high water that are flowing throughout the county. And there is a report of at least one home with roof damage northwest of Roth. And again, in addition to that, a lot of reporting of flooding in Ada and street lights are down on Arlington, Arlington Street in the area. So uh, yeah, that's why they have that kind of flood warning ongoing in Pontotoc County. So uh, in addition, so this and all that, I mean, you can see all that rain, the reds, the oranges, it's a lot of rain. So if this tornado is still on the ground as it's that main area of circulation is kind of it's trying to push into Pontotoc County, you are not, I mean, and also it's dark, so you're not going to be able to see it. So just stay where you are. And if you know you maybe have to get out driving, 
try not to and definitely avoid roads that you know flood easily. Turn around, don't drown. There, again, reports of several cars who are stranded there maybe tried to get through it, didn't think the water was that tall or that high up, but it only takes six inches of water to get your car, smaller car, swept off the road and about 12 inches of water, 12 to 24 for a larger SUV, which sounds like a lot, but when we're dealing with heavy rain like this, it all bunches up into one spot that doesn't drain well. You can get that in a matter of minutes with the rain that we're seeing this evening. So again, flood warnings still ongoing. That's going to be an issue, but as far as any tornadoes and rotation, we're still just looking at a few of these warnings, but nothing still confirmed for the Pontotoc County area at this time. So hopefully that's a trend in the right direction because it seems uh, earlier today once the warnings came out, they were automatically confirmed. So hopefully that means there's no active tornado on the ground at this time, but we are going to treat it as that the case. So if you are in this polygon, you need to be seeking shelter. As a reminder, interior room, get as far low as to the ground as you can, get as far into whatever uh, house, apartment you're in, and then protect your head. You want as many walls between you and the outside as possible because the winds, whether it's straight line winds or tornadic winds, whatever that debris that's lofted in the air, uh, you don't want that flying around. You want some protection for that as you're uh, seeking shelter there. Okay, what time? These go until 1245. Is that correct? So some of these should be expiring oh, here yeah. in about the next minute. Oh, yeah, there we go. Just wiped off our screen here. So yeah, those tornado warnings for Pontotoc County and Cole County, excuse me, have been expired, but the one for Johnston County is still ongoing through one o'clock this morning. So about 15 more minutes. Uh, we'll see what they end up doing with this as it kind of moves northeast. I feel like the main area of circulation, while it's still so hard to see, I thought it moved into Pontotoc County, yeah, but it's very I difficult to tell. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we can maybe punch up either sheer rate or reflectivity to give us a better eye with that. It does look like we are getting a little bit of a sheer marker, but this we've had so much spin here that the product is just showing what's mm -hmm. already happened um, already combined with this. So I uh, just slowly loop it through because it would probably be somewhere here that we would have one because it was right here. Mm -hmm. Now play forward for me, Amber. Let's see. My thought is that that yeah. main circulation is likely north here. Uh, so we'll wait and see. Sometimes if they clear mornings early, they don't always clear from the system right away. So we can check that too. But hopefully starting to see maybe some of that tornado potential dropping short term. This is Chad. Hey, Chad, thanks so much for joining us. Tell me what you're seeing up there in Pontotoc County. Well, we have, uh, we've had at least uh, two tornadoes we know uh, touch down in our county tonight. Um, we are unknown for sure yet what our damages are due to all the flooding we have right now. We have multiple roads blocked with trees, um, multiple roads being either covered with water and in some cases washed out. Uh, we know we have one home with roof damage, uh, power poles down. Um, we do not have any injuries reported yet uh, due to the flooding or the tornado, either one. But uh, at this time, we're really short on damage assessment, unfortunately, due to the heavy rain and flooding that we're having. And what are some of the roads that have been washed out or that are seeing flooding? Do you have some of those names? Uh, <laughs> You would have to ask me that. I don't have a uh, don't have a list in front of me, but uh, there may be water across any road in the county at the moment. Basically, uh, we're getting reports from Bing, from Ada, from south of uh, Ada to Roth to Stonewall area. I mean, the whole county's got reports of flooded roads. Well, if you hear anything else, please let us know. Now, Thank you so. Oh, you have something else. Hold, hold on a second. Okay, so uh, 377, a little while ago we had a report that uh, Highway 377 at the uh, Craddock Road overpass was flooded. Uh, don't know that that's cleared yet. It probably hasn't, but that's probably the main one. Okay, 377 in Craddock highway Road. Highway there, so. All righty, well, what thank you. That? So I said 377 in Craddock Road. 
Yes, yes. All righty. Well, thank you so much. You've got more rain coming, but feel free to let us know. <laughs> uh, you know, reports as you get them will help us out. And you just heard from him, the Pontotoc a county emergency manager there and we have more rain coming for the overnight as you can see this line has been pushing on a newly issued severe thunderstorm warning does include Pontotoc County as well as Cole, Atoka and Hughes counties. This goes into 1 30 a.m. Sunday, possibly a sign of some of this tornado potential, maybe at least short term dropping off or transitioning more into a kind of this QLCS embedded threat here. Amber, what are you seeing and what are the specs on this? Yeah, so they uh, that's newly se severe thunderstorm warning issued for the main line for damaging wind threat. Now they are seeing that embedded circulations will still be possible. So the tornado threat isn't done, but kind of like what we've been seeing with these long track areas of circulation that should slowly start to come down that threat at least. But this warning again through 130 warned for winds up to 60 miles an hour about penny size hail will be uh, possible with that. I I also want to touch on some of the power outages. There are many I without power this uh, evening. So over 4,000 in Murray County, over 16,000 people in Carter County are without power this evening. For Love County, there's about a little over 4,000. Uh, Pontotoc County, a little over 1,700. And even over in Atoka County, they have about a little over 200 without power. So yeah, Carter County really got the brunt of this. Of course, they had those confirmed tornadoes, so it really doesn't come as a surprise as they had several power lines reported down so most of the county is without power in Carter County tonight um, and we are still monitoring the potential for tornadoes but overall the threat of anything besides kind of these brief spin ups that we're going to have that threat moving forward that m kind of major tornado threat the stronger bigger tornado threat is going to be dropping off once this main line kicks through. Okay, so we still have that one tornado warning left, but that I suspect will be canceled probably about 1 a.m. Maybe yes. about 10 more minutes left on that. So we'll continue to hold on uh, with that. And we, as Amber said, there's chances for these brief circulations to keep popping up out ahead of the line. The one thing about these brief spin up tornadoes, not always, but typically they're not nearly as intense as your supercell tornado. That's more isolated, has a lot more energy, a little bit more long lived, long track. When we start dealing with these transient circulations, they spin up, then they kind of fall apart. They spin up, then they kind of fall apart. Hopefully that's going to be reducing some of the damage that we would see from these. Now I have seen before we've had up to EF2 tornadoes. That was one time in southwestern Oklahoma the last couple of years. They did have a QLCS that ended up being a stronger tornado. So it's not that it can't happen, but we are hoping the trend here is maybe a little bit downwards and some of the intensity that we're seeing with the tornadoes. And hopefully we're also seeing how rapidly we are seeing tornadoes, maybe some of those numbers coming down some now that we're moving overnight. And at some point we're going to be transitioning to a heavy rain of it. We're kind of already there. I mean, sulfur is at five and a half inches of rain. Ada is at almost four inches of rain. As you've heard, we have flooding. There's flash flooding. Roads are even washed out. A reminder for folks hoping to get out tonight. Not a good idea. You don't know what the status of that road underneath the water is like, and we still have storms. So if you're trying to get outside to check on folks, keep in mind, we've still got storms, okay? So you're gonna be dealing with this line as it moves on through. And uh, eventually, once this line is east of you, you'll still have some rain, but that main kind of tornado potential will be dropping off as this moves east. But we're gonna see coming out here even about 1 a.m., uh, the latest outlook for Sunday from the Storm Prediction Center. We're still gonna be dealing with some thunderstorms because this line is expected to kind of stall out a bit into eastern Oklahoma, leave some leftover outflow boundaries and spark additional thunderstorms storms on the way tomorrow. And so again, we're, we're not completely done here with this storm threat. Amber's going to read out the track with this. This is now tracking the whole line as it's going to be moving through Texoma. Yeah, so this is not just this is not an area of circulation in particular. This is just that main line of severe now severe thunderstorm worn storms. So this is moving northeast at about 35 miles an hour. So that means McAllister. This is going to be at your back door around one o'clock this morning. Atoka around 128 Durant just before 2 a.m. this morning.
Okay, Jason Bryant from Johnston County Emergency Management. He is on the phone. I know we've been getting reports from Mansville and Ravia um, fire departments, but what can you tell us this evening, sir? Uh, we had a most, most of our departments out storm spotting. Uh, haven't had any reports of damage other than the uh, initial reports near Pace Road and Indian Church Road near Reagan. Um, been checking with Mill Creek Fire. I know there's been several uh, tornado warnings in that area. Haven't had any reports of damage as of yet. Um, we are gathering teams now to go assist uh, Sulphur uh, as soon as I get in touch with their emergency manager. Okay, yeah, I know Sulphur. We've been getting a lot of pictures from just catastrophic damage in the Sulphur area. So y'all are going to be sending crews out to Murray County here? Be affirmative. All right, sir. We'll just keep us updated on what y'all are seeing and uh, with if you do end up seeing any damage in the area because there was that tornado warned storm that did go through. So thank you uh, for all you're doing this evening to keep us safe and uh, you stay safe yourself, sir. Okay, I will do. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go back and kind of time out this main line of storms we just heard from the emergency management in Johnston County. They are going to assist Murray County and Sulphur as they are seeing a lot of damage tonight. And that's very Texoma. We all come together in nights like these. And if we're not dealing with damage, then we're going to help somebody that is. So that's great to hear from the Johnston County area and those uh, departments there. But OK, the main line timeline, we're getting back to uh, the timeline of storms. So McAllister around 109, a just before 1.30, about 2 a.m. for Durant, Ferris, Oklahoma, about 2.21. Um, uh, the Washita public hunting area about 238 Fort Smith around 321 um, and so I know we've been talking so much about areas in Oklahoma north of the Red River that's where most of the activity has been tonight but I know our North Texas counties county people they're wanting to know okay well what about us so we are seeing kind of some storms ahead of the initial line here nothing too concerning at this time but I did could definitely see the south end of this line maybe producing some severe storms as it rolls through. So I'm going to time this out for Cook and Grayson County uh, around Denison about 232 Lake Ray Roberts around 238 Sherman at around 302, which I feel like that's going to actually be a little bit sooner since Durant is going to be seeing that closer to about 230. So general timing, it's heading your way North Texas. You're still under that watch, the tornado watch. So we'll continue to keep you uh, yeah, updated there. But for now, we're not forgetting about you. You just don't have any current threat as far as damaging wind, hail, or even tornadoes, but heavy rain. There are some storms that are moving through. You're probably seeing a lot of lightning. If you're looking off into the distance, that is from that main line that will be shortly moving in. You can see just south near Graham, and uh, that's west of the Fort Worth area. They have a severe thunderstorm warning. So I do imagine that the gap here will be filled. We kind of have this gap in between Bryan counties all the way up through 35 Cook County and some of those areas south where there's not a severe thunderstorm warning, but I imagine that gap will be filled as the line gets a little bit closer. Yeah, and as this line moves on through, I mean, we've been talking, we've been talking about the flooding threat. Sorry, I almost tripped on my feet here. Uh, we have more rain that we're expecting that's only going to make the flooding worse heading into the overnight. And what the trend was earlier today in Oklahoma when we saw these storms from the south moving in, pushing north quickly in Oklahoma, those went tornadic. So what we're going to be watching for is this additional development that's now on the north side of DFW and also coming in to our North Texas counties. What is this going to do? Is this just going to be some light showers that lift in combined with the line move east? Well, that's what we can hope for. But uh, the trend today has been anything isolated ahead of the line quickly uh, grows, intensifies, and then those have all been isolated supercells that have produced tornadoes pretty much everywhere. And so uh, we will be watching that for both Cook and for Grayson County. Short term, though, that uh, these storms are OK, they're not severe. We are watching those, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on things. So we have an update coming in here. Amber, I know we still have that confirmed tornado tag with this mm -hmm. tornado warning, but I don't think we've heard much in terms of reports. And this is set to end here in about two minutes. Yeah, so this is going to be on the way pretty much out here pretty soon. But yeah, this is from that area of circulation. Again, we just talked to emergency management in Johnston County that said they did get reports near the 
Mans or the Mill Creek area of that possible tornado or that was on the ground, confirmed tornado on the ground, excuse me, but no reports of any damage. We haven't gotten any updated reports and they are sending their agencies to the Sulphur area to help out. So that kind of maybe gives us uh, some hope there that there's not really a threat there anymore because that main area of circulation has kind of fizzled out. So we're continuing to watch, but again, that warning will go until one o'clock this morning. So my thinking here is they're just going to wait, let it expire. Their National Weather Service is also very busy this evening. So I'm sure they're just going to let it run its course and uh, no talks of anything going to be reissued. So Cole County, Central Homa area, I know we're getting questions on Facebook on can we get, a, get out of our shelter or our cellar. Right now, the tornado threat is pretty much over for now, not for the rest of the night, but tornado warnings should be expiring for, or excuse me, that was Cole County. That was a while ago. They have been expired, but Johnston County, this should be expiring here within the next minute. Uh, yeah, and also here at 1 a.m. Uh, for your Sunday, that's usually about the time we get the next update in from the Storm Prediction Center. So we're going to be looking for that. This would mainly be for after 7 a.m. or after 8 a.m. Sunday morning. What is looking ahead of the day? Because we've been talking about all weekend. We've got a storm threat. Well, we're going to do this again tomorrow, just maybe hopefully not nearly as intense as what we're seeing today. And so that update will also come in here shortly, just in the next couple of minutes and we'll be seeing what it is that they're thinking what they're expecting and that'll also help us prepare not just for that but for folks dealing with damage tomorrow uh, you want to make sure that you're not out you know in your yard or on your roof or something checking uh, what's going on assessing everything if we have more storms expected to move on through. So it does look like they're clearing counties once that main line moves on east on the westward side of that, once the rain really starts to kind of drop off that really, really heavy rain on the leading edge, we will start to see some of this tornado potential dropping off. Garvin County has now been cleared. Stevens County has now been cleared. Um, any updates coming in within this, Amber? Uh, yeah, so it looks like they did just add a few more counties to the tornado watch this morning. I'm kind of waiting for this all to update here as far as what time. There we go. Thank you, Kathy. So this is going to, at least for Latimer, Pushmataha, Chalk Choctaw County. There's seven o'clock this morning. Uh, I know that's not popping up on your screen here, but here in a minute it will. So I would assume that Grayson, Fannin, and Lamar County, who have also just been added to this tornado watch, will more than likely also run through at least 7 a.m. this morning. Let's see if I can't uh, kind of get the specs on this. Yes, so Grayson, Cook, or excuse me, Grayson, Fannin, Lamar, Choctaw, Pushmataha, and Latimer County. You are going to be under a tornado watch now through 7 o'clock this morning. So uh, that is the update as far as the watch. The ones Carter, Love, Cook, Pontotoc, Johnston, Marshall, Cole, Atoka, and Bryan County. That is still slated to end at around 3 o'clock this morning. So we'll see how timing trends and if there'll be an extension on any of that. But yes, so the tornado watch continues, which just shows that while this is starting to get a lot more linear. There is still that threat for embedded circulation within the main line. Um, but yeah, there's seven o'clock this morning. So yeah, it's going to be a busy, busy night for uh, pretty much the rest of Texoma here, especially east. And usually when we're we're talking about this QLCS threat or those brief spin up tornadoes, we're watching for like little edges and little kinks along this line. So you can see kind of how this is a little bit more ridge like along the line. It's not just straight. That means we're not just dealing with straight line winds. We kind of have some spin up action and some rotation there along the leading line here. So we are seeing that a little bit with some of these and that's going to be something we're going to be watching this progress for going forwards. But now it is a 102 AM that tornado warning is no longer in place there for Johnston County. So we officially have no tornado warnings for Texoma. But here's the deal. Today has been crazy. We're still expecting the tornado potential to be here with these storms. So we are going to stay on uh, tonight, at least for a little bit longer, just continuing to watch uh, this potential tornado threat evolve because we're not done yet and it doesn't benefit anyone if we hop off and then we get another warning. So we are going to stay on with this at least short term for quite a little bit longer as this line moves on through. 
And then if it kind of establishes itself that these warnings are maybe not as quick, we may transition to some more digital coverage for just the overnight. But short term, we are going to be remaining Okay, so we have some damaged photos coming in. This is Sulphur, Oklahoma, Reina Sports Lounge. Uh, what did you say, Kyle? Okay, so this is some damage here. And uh, this looks like a whole wall of a building. Amber, you tell me to yeah, what looks, you see here, but it looks, looks like, like a building it. has collapsed yeah. in Sulphur from this. Because this is the street sign right there. Yeah. And then we've clearly got some tree limbs you can see all the debris uh, scattered and then this is definitely a tornado damage there in sulfur we know sulfur got hit hard we know people uh, were trapped in their homes as you've heard the johnson county emergency manager saying that they were sending crews to murray county to help so we know uh, that there is um, some search and rescue underway and just first responder efforts uh, to to go and to help folks out here for these overnight hours but there's some of the damage uh, that we've seen now coming in from sulfur and daylight is gonna show us even even more damage. And unfortunately, we had a lot of cities hit today. We had, uh, here's the storm reports. Ardmore got hit, I think three to four times by different tornadoes. Sulfur got hit a couple times. We had those track, we had one in Marietta. We had some track in Marshall County. We had some track in Johnson County. We had some confirmed in Pontotoc County. We had warnings for Garvin County. I mean, all day, basically, uh, right here, the heart of South Central Oklahoma, seeing tornadoes and tornado warnings just moving on through uh, the hail. We really didn't get a lot of hail reports. This has mainly been a tornado event, a uh, tornado outbreak so far today that we've seen very little warnings had a few initially, but uh, since then, not as many warnings with that large hail. It's really just been the tornado potential today. Amber. Yeah, and we're still watching these storms, and I know there are so many without power, so hopefully uh, generators, hopefully your phones are charged. Um, again, over 16,000 in Carter County alone, total across Texoma from Garvin to Murray to Love, even over onto Atoka County, I would say at least. 25 to 27,000 in Texoma without power late tonight. So hopefully that will come on soon. But again, this line is still moving through, so it's going to take a bit. And remember, with flooding, roads are washed out in some areas in Pontotoc County and I would argue really anywhere in Texoma, they could be washed out, damaged power lines down. We just saw that photo out of Sulphur. There are going to be roads that people can't get to. I know Love County did post that they are encouraging people don't try to get out. There are several roads, the departments, the fire departments that are trying to go out, get people, help people and rescue. They can't do their job if roads are kind of high traffic. So don't try to get out and assess damage right now. Just kind of stay put, but we're going to be monitoring this storm threat. So it might be a while before crews can get out and get the power restored because there's still an ongoing threat here. And you can see even behind the uh, main line here, where the severe weather potential still lies behind it. While it's not severe, I mean, there's still quite a bit of lightning spread throughout. There's heavy rain and in those situations you just can't bank on people being able to get to where you need to in order for the power to get turned on. So we hear you. We see you. We hope that the power will come on here soon. Just an update on anything that's going on. There are no current active tornado warnings. I know people in Cole County were asking if they are OK to get out of their shelter. As of now, the tornado threat is not there. The threat still lingers. Again, watch till, till 3 a.m. for some of our Oklahoma counties and those further east like Pushmataha, Choctaw County under that tornado watch through 7 a.m. But right now there's no tornado on the ground. There's no tornado warning, but there is that severe thunderstorm warning for the main line, which really goes from Bryan County all the way up in towards Cole and Atoka counties for winds up to about 60 miles an hour and penny sized hail and also heavy rain, lightning, not to diminish that threat either because that's going to lead to even more problems moving forward with roads and power and trying to get get things back on here tonight, but we are going to keep you updated. I know it's been a very long night. I know people are nervous, especially it's been an interesting uh, severe weather season. We've had we had a level four risk what a few weeks ago and it really didn't do much. The environment just kind of 
has been tricky this season, I won't lie, and it's been kind of okay. Are we actually going to see storms this time around? So we appreciate you sticking with us and trusting us through this because it's been a very weird couple of weeks of weather where it just hasn't really happened. But this was one of those evenings where we were looking at in advance and thinking, ah, we don't think this is going to be one of those times where it just doesn't pan out. And as uh, we have seen it, several tornadoes on the ground damage. So yeah, this time around, this is why it's important. While it doesn't happen every time there's a threat, you still need to respect the threat when it is there level one, two, three, four, or five. So again, we appreciate you sticking with us and trusting us through this process. Spring is always a very interesting and busy season for us here. But yeah, we're uh, still watching that severe weather threat, severe thunderstorm morning through 1:30 for Atoka, Bryan, Cole County. Winds primarily the threat with this one, upwards of 60, and I would argue you maybe even 70 miles an hour. So far, since the last tornado warning expired around one o'clock this morning, we really haven't seen any additional areas of concern. And primarily what we're getting from the National Weather Service and from emergency management is just a lot about flooding here. Johnston County now reporting that there's flooding in Mill Creek. Um, and we're starting to hear some rain here outside of our studio. So uh, North Texas, you are next in line here for that storm threat uh, to move through. Tornado watch through 7 o'clock this morning for Grayson, Fannin, and Lamar County. So storms right now that are in Grayson County, even though it is raining here outside of our studio, that is not really where the threat is. The threat is still off into Monte County. So these, I mean, haven't even made it into Cook County yet. So the bottom half of this line is kind of lagging behind a bit. So we're looking at about from Cook County, less than 20 miles away, Grayson County. These storms are probably less than 50 miles away from the area, but the line south of the Red River so far has not been severe. We don't anticipate it to stay that way, though. Uh, yeah, the biggest thing is just this cell right here coming into Cook County. Uh, that will will watch because the trend again, anything south moving north has really intensified. Now the one thing working in our favor with that is that the distance is a lot less for this to grow before it encounters this line. So uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to recap through some of these videos, show you what's been going on so far this evening. Again, everything started about eight o'clock and later really rapidly ramped up. Uh, we had pretty much every tornado warning ended up producing a tornado like this Ardmore was looking at the Best Buy from this view and you could see uh, that massive tornado there with the lightning. We had at least two, three, possibly four tornadoes tracking through Carter County earlier tonight. Most of them looking like this. And unfortunately, we do have reports of damage. We have a lot of damage, a lot of power outages. It's been a very busy night, especially for folks in Carter County elsewhere. Uh, here's another photo, that very large cone tornado. This also so taken in Ardmore earlier today. Valley Ranch Road seeing that tornado moving on through there again. Carter County, the heart of Texas. We had tornadoes crossing I-35, hitting vehicles, causing damage. Ardmore tornado again, west side of I-35 there before it crossed the highway. Here is another view of that large, large cone tornado that moved through there into Carter County. We know that there's been damage from Marietta to Sulphur. Here's the Marietta damage. You can see power lines down over those roads. You don't want to drive over that, by the way. That's a big no no. But we've got a pretty widespread damage with pieces of buildings, vehicles, whatever it may be. Also, they're scattered over the road near Marietta was also where we had that tornado crossing I-35. We know the Valero was hit there that caused damage. The big question is the significant damage damage in sulfur. We've heard reports because these tornadoes that were in Ardmore, those moved into sulfur later on and you can see with lightning, it's going to be right here in the middle of your screen, that very large cone tornado that crossed through uh, there in South Central Oklahoma. This was about 1130, so Last night, 1130, this wreaked havoc. Uh, this may have been the one. We had one on the ground for at least uh, 25 miles. That's Kings Road in Ardmore that saw this specific tornado, but we had them track into Murray County, into Pontotoc County, and they remained on the ground for a long time. Here's another one from Ardmore. This is going to be in the middle of your screen. 
This is by the Best Buy warehouse. Doug Drace taking this photo and video of that very large tornado. You can see with lightning illuminating that right here. This is the main area that we were watching, and that is the main tornado. Here's another angle of that same tornado. You see the, the shaking sign. Tornado coming right at him. Very large, dangerous tornado here, especially nocturnal tornadoes, because you can't see them coming, and then they're there, and then you realize it a little too late. So we had lightning illuminating these, but in general, very difficult to see those very large tornadoes that trucked through right in the heart of Texoma. Here's Sulphur. We've been getting in some of the damage. This is the one we've heard that there were people trapped in their homes there and Sulphur taking a direct hit at least once, maybe possibly twice as storms moved on through. And uh, we will have updated storm coverage details, everything with this coming up uh, later on into uh, the afternoon hours, the evening hours. Tomorrow we'll have stuff on our website. Of course, you can watch us at Keaton News at 5 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, we'll recap a lot of this damage, but tomorrow's threat still in place. Real quick, we'll show you that new outlook. Amber, if we wanna type that up, the new outlook for a Sunday. This is going to be Sunday afternoon and evening. So even once this line moves through, we're gearing up for another round of storms tomorrow. And now we'll have a level three risk in place. There will be tornado potential with this. And so unfortunately, we're not done just yet, but are more to sulfur, at least in the level one on the way for tomorrow. So we're going to continue tracking these storms overnight. What we're going to do here, there's currently no active tornado warnings. So we're going to be hopping off the air, continuing some digitally. We may not be speaking continuously digitally as we need to reset a little bit here early this morning. But uh, once there's another tornado warning, we will be right back on your screens here, but you can watch us on Facebook. You can watch us on Katen.com. You can still email us your storm photos to news team there at Katen.com, weather at Katen.com. And we will again be right back on here if we get another tornado warning. But if you still want to watch this line coverage, we'll be doing cut ins too as needed through these morning hours if it's not tornadic. But you can watch us digitally. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching, and we're going to get off your television screens. And uh, go from there. If you're watching still on Facebook or online, we're just going to have this looping some for now. There is a severe thunderstorm warning out, uh, mainly for winds here with the storm heavy rain, uh, but no active tornado warnings here in Texoma. So we'll be updating throughout. But for now, we're just going to have this radar running here as this moves on through.